Welcome students. Let's learn about our sensory organs. Let's understand what are sensory organs. An organ that tells us about our surroundings are called sensory organs. Our eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin are our sensory organs. Let's learn them in detail. Eyes. It is with our eyes that we can see. We can tell the color of the things we see. We can tell their shape. We can also guess the distance of things from us. Ears. We hear with our ears. Mainly, we come to know what a person is saying to us. The ears also tell us whether the sound we hear is sweet or harsh. They can tell us whether the sound is that of a bird or an animal. They also tell us which direction a sound is coming from. Nose. We can smell with nose. We perceive the smell of a fragrant flower or incense stick because of the nose. Again, it is the nose which tells us that there is a foul smell in the air or that the food is spoiled. At such times, we can take proper precautions. Tongue We can taste with our tongue. Sugar and jaggery are sweet. Bitter gourd is bitter. Lemons and raw mangoes are sour. Salt is salty. It is due to the tongue that we know these tastes. If we eat a chilli, our tongue gets a burning sensation. We say that the chilli is hot. Skin We come to know if something we touch is hot or cold, rough or smooth because of our skin. Now let's understand the coordination in our movements. We carry out many tasks. For every task, we make different kinds of movements. We use different parts of our body for these different movements. The woman in this picture is roasting some peanuts in a pan. Which parts of her body is she using? Let's see. Her head is bent forward. She is holding the pan steady with the tongs in her left hand. With the spatula in her right hand, she is stirring the peanuts in the pan. Her eyes are on the pan. She is watching to ensure that the peanuts are properly roasted. Well, roasted peanuts have a typical savoury flavour. When her nose gets that smell, she is going to put off the gas stove. You can see that several parts of her body need to work together smoothly. If they were not coordinated, she would fumble. The peanuts might spill. They may be overdone or they may not get roasted well enough. We need coordination to get any task done smoothly. Lack of coordination gives rise to mistakes or muddles. Let's see how to overcome this ability. If a part of our body does not function well, we face many difficulties. If our eyes do not function well, we cannot see properly. If our ears do not work as they should, we cannot hear well. In such a situation, our movements are not smooth. We find it difficult to do things on our own. But such situations can be overcome. Some disabilities can be corrected by medical treatment. In some matters, we can take the help of other people. Often, some special devices can be used to overcome the disability. Then, it becomes possible to carry out our own tasks independently. Here are some tips to overcome disability. If we cannot see well, we can use spectacles. If we cannot see at all, we can make use of sounds or feel with the hands to get things done. You might have seen a blind person using a white cane. Blind people use a cane to feel the way in front of them. The sounds they hear around them also help them to know the situation around them. Thus, they can make their way independently even on a crowded road full of traffic. A person who cannot hear well can use a hearing aid. Those who cannot hear at all can use sign language. In some cases, a surgery can help a person to hear. If there is a defect in the leg, a special wheelchair can be used. Then, the defect in the leg is no more a hurdle. Let's read an inspiring story. Do you know? Arunima Sinha is a young woman from Uttar Pradesh. 
Once, when she was 22 years old, she was travelling in a train. She had to fight off some thieves. In the scuffle, she was thrown off the train. Another speeding train ran over her. She was seriously injured. Doctors saved her life, but they had to cut off her right leg. While she was in the hospital, many people would come to see her. Each person would worry about her future. But Arunima resolved that she would never give up. She would achieve something so extraordinary that no one could ever say she was helpless. Doctors gave her an artificial leg. As soon as she got used to her new leg, she began to train for mountaineering. Just one year after her accident, she climbed one of the high peaks in the Himalayas. The very next year, she climbed Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world. What can we learn from Arunima's story? Self-confident people inspire others and boost their confidence. They overcome their fears and tend to be risk-takers. They know that no matter whatever obstacles come in their way, they have the ability to get past them. Always remember, even if there is a disability in any organ, we can find a way out of that difficulty. We can learn to be self-reliant. Thank you and please like, share and subscribe.